In the last workshop, we've learned about image transformation. We've taken a good look at how to perform what is known as an affine transformation using OpenCV and Python. We've learned specifically how to achieve a rotation, a skew, a translation, a scale, or resizing uh, using a 2x3 matrix. Now, I encourage you, if you haven't done it yet, to go back to the materials on my GitHub and make sure you studied the chapter. We then look at the different techniques in thresholding, specifically a simple thresholding using a global threshold value and adaptive thresholding. We learn about the kernel convolutions. We've learned how to estimate contours and drawing contours. We use that technique to build up a simple segmentation process to help us count the number of penguins or Lego blocks in our image. We then look at uh, edge detection. And we, again, we spoke about the Sober operator and the image segmentation process. We talk about the Kenny edge detector and then um, we touch on the, con the control retrieval and approximation techniques, but just how useful are them? Just how useful are contours? Now we're about to find out uh, with a preview um, of, the, of the next chapter in this series. So we end the series at chapter 3, but um, I'm about to put up a chapter 4. And just to put it out there, all of the content in this series, all of the data sets, the Python scripts, the images, the videos, all of them are freely available and I'll urge you to follow the study guide that I posted up right on this page on the GitHub. Um, so that's about it, and see you in my next workshop. Until then, be nice to each other. Well, just how useful are contours? Have you seen a security token like that issued by a, uh, a bank? Maybe in personal banking, in corporate banking, this is a, a fairly token device issued out. These are some of the sample images that I've collected. They belong to me. The, the tokens belong to me. and. Let's find out very quickly, how do we tackle a problem like that? How do we um, identify the digits that are in here? And this is a really good exercise. So I encourage you to just take a look at this preview demo and we'll run through some of these concepts very quickly to keep the video short. All right, so this is the device and we're using the same techniques that we've learned in the last workshop to uh, threshold and, and to, to find the, you know, the edge of our object. And then we find our target contour and you see there is a, a purple, uh, boundary line around it. Now, the, it's not the only contour. You can see that the, that if I were to run this code, these are all the contours and they, they find multiple of them. In my code here, and I'll show you that in a second, but you can see all the contours here. And the reason you have that is because in my code here, um, I'm trying to find the first 10 sorted by the size of the contours, the contour area. Okay, so what it's gonna do when I run the code, what it's gonna do is it's gonna find out the find the largest contour and then it's gonna find the second largest one, the third largest, the fourth largest, fifth largest, and it's gonna go until it finds 10 and it stops. And again, this sort of the, the line of code that is doing that, right? Now let's take a look at the a, a few more examples of this. Um I'm gonna run into two. And all of these scripts, again, are available on my GitHub, so you're free to go and download them and run them on your own. Now, what do I do now? I'm gonna find all the, the, again, the top 10 contours, and I'm gonna print out the area and the parameter of each contour. So I see that the area here, that's 22,000, um, and the parameter is, is uh, right here, 653.8, and again, you see it's sorted in that order. So what is the purpose of this? What is the utility of this? Now the idea is that you want to find the largest contour on this device and that is a, it's a safe assumption to make that the largest contour will correspond to this region of interest. Okay, ROI, region of interest. We want to find this. Why? Because we want to identify each digit and that's kind of the idea. Let me do one last um, example of this. Now notice that if I hop through this, it's going to go in the largest area, second largest area, third largest area, this is 3000, this is 700, 500, 400, right? It's going to go through that. And what do we want to do? We want to find the largest one. We want to take the largest one and I've done that already. So I'm going to run a code for you. So if I were to execute that line of code, I'm going to just use simple subsetting, image subsetting or slicing or NumPy slicing to take out this area of the contour, the, the, the box around it. Okay, so I'm gonna print out this ROI, this widget of interest, because this is really what I care for. I don't care about the background, I don't care about the, you know, the, the digits here, I don't care about the bang, I don't care about the fingers. I, I really want this. This is, we give it a name, we say this is the region of interest, so ROI. How do we, how do we achieve that? Now here, this is the bounding box, right? We got a bounding box and we use slicing, simple NumPy slicing, 
and we print that out and we show it we give the window a name and we name our window ROI and then finally I save them to intermediary uh, intermediary folder I call them inter and I put the image name um, which is basically just whatever it is right here take that and then perform a regex search on it and then just give it a name so now I have a folder inter that stores all of this ROI so just to show you that again one more time if I run this code now Notice that I have that, and at the end of the code, it's just going to print that out, right? It's going to print that out, it's going to have it here, OCBC, all right? Now, well, what happens if I change this path? I add a path here, and I'm going to call it assets. I'm going to go to assets. Now, I'm, I'm going to try DBS instead, okay? So, dbs.jpg. If I run that, now, this is a different device. But notice that the code still executes as you would expect and still manage to find the ROI. And again, it takes a copy of that and it saves it into our folder, right? So, so this is a code, this is our code. We extract the ROI. This is step two of the process. Okay, step two of the process. What, what is the what, what's the final step? What's the third step? The last step is now to let me run that first and I'll explain that. Now it, once you have the ROI. We're going to start by blurring it. This is simple techniques that you've learned in your last workshop. We've learned that. We've learned about the medium blur, the Gaussian blur, um, all kind of blurring techniques. We learned that. So we take that to reduce, to, to reduce or to eliminate the noise in the background. And we take that, we trim it a little bit so we don't need the top part. And then we perform the thresholding techniques that we've learned. And then we perform some morphological operations. And then we start to find the contour on this. Now, notice that it doesn't find it in the right order, right? We, what we want to do is we want to perform a sort operations and ordering operations. How do we order that? Well, notice that each of this contour, there is an X coordinate and a, the, the coordinates of X and Y. So what you can do is you can just sort them by the value on the X coordinates. Okay, so you want to sort them from left to right. So you want them, you want this to be the first digit, the second digit, third digit. So finding contours itself is not enough because you're gonna be you're gonna be able to classify to recognize the digits, but they're not gonna be the right order. So your your program is gonna output something like a 758262. It's not not gonna be what you want, right? Nonsensical. So what you want is to sort the contour so that it goes from um, the left, the leftmost to the rightmost. And then you can classify each one of them one by one. So this is a six, and it says it's a six. This is an 8, it says it's an 8, and then a 2, and then a 7, and then a 5, and then a 2. And my program at the end of it would also print out the, the digits. I'm going to show you the script very quickly. Right at the end of it, you see that uh, I'll print the digits, and I'll uh, you can say this is a, or give it a, say that the uh, digits on the token are variable in here. So it's clearer what, what it's printing. Okay, so let's run through that again. And what do we have? 682752. That's correct. Okay. And again, we can try this, uh, but this time, let's try on a different token. Now, th the first one is a DBS, uh, uh, this one. Now, the second one looks like that. This looks a little bit more trickier. You, you'll be asking, hey, would, the, would your program still run if I try that on a different image uh, with a little bit more noise? Let's, let's try that. Let's try and see if it still works. Okay, none, press enter, execute the script. Now this is the second one. This is no longer the first one. The first one was 682752. This is a 306899. So let's see if it works. Run it, performing the same operations, the same image pre-processing uh, steps. And sort it, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. That's correct from the leftmost to the rightmost. And then three, it, it, Classifier 306899. Now notice that I'm not using any kind of machine learning or deep learning in this, um, at least up to this part of the workshop. What we're really trying to learn um, is the image processing from, from, uh, from, a, from a, uh, you know, a, a pure traditional conventional computer vision point of view. And then we learn deep learning and we'll see how we can achieve this maybe using a, uh, something like a convolutional neural network. But nothing in this series so far up to this point, up to chapter 4, we haven't really touched on that. So you're achieving this using traditional methods that has been there for tens of years, okay? So um, this is what the workshop is about. This is a short preview of that. I hope it uh, yeah, helps you and um, bring a new perspective to your work. And if you want to study this in more details, go to the GitHub page that I uh, 
showed you earlier, this, this one, this is the link to it. Uh, not useful, but you should have the link. It's on my, it's on my, uh, my, my Instagram, my GitHub. And so find that and um, I'll see you in the next workshop.